Frank's Red Hot is the perfect blend of flavor and heat. So you can use an entire bottle to make recipes like buffalo chicken dip or buffalo nachos. Or even things that don't start with buffalo. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. Craig. Oh, well, you think 59 is special? Oh, well, for fans of Owazu. Okay, so you won by six touchdowns. That don't impress them much. <laughs> oh, 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 so you got the win, but it was FCS. Don't get me yeah. wrong, they still think you're all right. But that D keeps them up in the middle of the night. That didn't impress them much. All right, there you go. Oh, that's fantastic. That was, that was a fine. long one. That was that. That was the most writing I done it, did, ha, did, except for the uh, Kyle Smith hiring podcast. That's yeah, the longest one I've written. Yeah, that's true. That's that's definitely the longest or, one we've had in some time. Parodied or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was shorter, but we got delayed starting, so I just kept adding to it. You know, <laughs> it's because I was, I was working on my Monday column. I'm trying so hard to like knock those suckers out before like 11:38 p.m. on Monday night. Yeah. You know, where I can still say it's technically Monday, but not really, you know. So I got All home right. from the Seahawks and worked on it. And then, like, we were going to start recording at 9, and I was like, I, but I'm in the middle of this. I have wrote a little. Oh, yeah, little, you like, can't. You know, I'm like, I got this thing in my head momentum, about yeah. writing about Brandon Arcanado. And I'm like, you know, I got this thing I'm trying to say, and I just got to finish it, you know. So you know how that goes. I do. Yeah. And – I do know that this is podcast versus everyone. Oh, dude, you are getting so good at those like segues. Oh, thank you. Um, I've been listening to other podcasts. And by the way, I'm Craig Powers of com, And with me is Jeff Neusser, also Hello. of Cougcenter.com. That's me. Jeff, how you doing? I'm good. Went to the Seahawks today. So uh, Seahawks won in, in one of the most uninteresting games I've seen in, in a while. Yeah, that was that was uh, we. Not, it's not a Seahawks podcast. We won't get into it. But that yeah, was, uh, it's a pretty typical, painful Seahawks game. Especially so, the first game of the year. It seems they always do yeah. some shit like that. But. That's all right. They won. Winning's good, right? Like right. You know, the Cougs are winning. That's good. Yeah. Winning. Winning's always good. Well, um, I know uh, you're feeling pretty sleepy, but you're having a beer. I'm drinking coffee, bro. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I, and I know you have like like you can't drink coffee this late at night or you'd be up until tomorrow morning. But if as long as I sip it, it just kind of gives me enough juice to like make it through here. Because I mean, I'm not I, I'm up. I mean, I don't know. Like we're gonna be up at least another couple of hours by the time we finish recording and I finish mixing it and uploading it and all that good stuff. Like, yeah, it's gonna yeah. be damn near midnight. So yeah, so that's really interesting podcast stuff. Um, yeah, don't tell my principal. Well, I'm drinking a beer. Atta boy. And uh, it is, as you know, I was at uh, I was driving back from Oregon um, on Thursday. Decided to stop in Portland for uh, dinner at Great Notion Brewing. Mm, um, love that place. Uh, so Great Notion is um, obviously a brewery in Portland. They have two locations. I went to their newer location it's uh, a larger production facility they they have a 30 barrel system there now on Ooh. top of their on top of their original seven barrel nice so that's why they can do cans now it's because they can make enough beer that's to awesome. put in cans because as you know the crowlers were pretty limited before when they had the small yes. system yes um but yeah so great notion has come up pretty fast uh they've made a real name for themselves uh they've they do hazy ipas really well um so uh they do um they they wanted to make new england style ipas and that's and they crush that uh they make some really crazy like over fruited over like saturated with adjuncts beers that i used to like and i've kind of grown less fond of them uh one in particular blueberry muffin it's like uh-huh. a it's like a sour it's like a berliner vice but it's like I don't know what the hell they put in it, but it smells it like blueberry tastes muffins. tastes like a blueberry muffin. And smells, and yeah. It tastes like a yogurt, blueberry muffin yogurt, because it's tart. But Yeah. But then, and, yeah. Then, and then they have their double stack, which is just a 1,000 pounds of maple syrup. Like, when you open it, it just leaves your house smelling like maple syrup for, like, a week. 
Um, I, I can't do those beers as much as I could anymore. They're a little over the top for me. Um, but I, but I, uh, I do still really like their hazy IPAs, especially their, they make a lot of weird fruited milkshake ones and I'm not into that, but just their kind of, I don't know if you can say classic, but the more to style, regular, regular old new England style, hazy IPAs, um, are very good. And wh- I'm yep. drinking one of those, one of their original ones. Um, it was originally called juice box, but a lot of breweries use that name for hazy IPAs. And I'm guessing mm-hmm. one of them, one of them came at, uh, came at or they might have gotten in trouble with um you know the ttb uh which monitors uh um labels and names of beers uh because juice box might uh, you know uh, if there's anything to do with (laughs) anything that make a a kid think they would think a kid wants a beer like that's you know so i'm guessing they told him no you can't call (laughs) so now it's like a can he's like juice box Mm. what is this (laughs) Yeah, well, there's even on the label. It's funny. There's a there's this dude. They all have all these characters, but it's like this dude and a beard, and he's he's got like he's drinking out of a juice box. Yeah. Um. But so yeah, this is now it's called JB Double IPA. JB Double IPA. So they so that they, they um they they just changed the name a little yeah. bit, you know. But it's kind of a nod to what it used to be. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, uh it's it's pretty tasty. A double IPA, eight percent. Uh, it's really well done, really well to style. It's got a nice, like you open the can and it's super aromatic and pour it out. It's just like crushing your nose with, you know, pineapple and yep. mango and shit like that. And then you just sip it. It's really nice, you know, pleasant, not too bitter on the back end. Um, yeah, we were drinking some of the tailgate this weekend. I got a little more. Um, maybe if you see me soon enough, Jeff, I'll pass a can or two mm. on to you, but um but you know you gotta see me um well i do i have a shirt to give you i know and man you've got beer for me and yeah. yeah maybe we should do a live podcast next week yeah we should probably do that we should there's yeah. no reason not to yeah it's a road but, game yeah exactly all, all right. right so anyway. yeah um yeah so this is really tasty yeah. uh highly recommend i've yeah i've had it it's awesome. their spots are cool i think if you're into like super oversaturated beers like you'll like a lot of their other beers too well, a lot of people love those beers i I'm not a- i would even go so far as to say like if you haven't had it like it's worth like having Trying, yeah you know like i mean even if that's like not necessarily your thing like even just you know try and like a you know a five ounce pour or something just oh to- yeah and they do well that's I, me and my friends like that so i'm in i'm part of a facebook group called anything but great notion so because like we just make fun of the fact that they make these ridiculous beers right and uh but it's funny because i was in there so what what happens is they do have five ounce pours at the tasting room and people just go in there and they get like 10 five ounce pour, right like, and so they're trying 10 different beers because they yes. have like they have like 25 of their beers on tap yep like it's it's great like they have so many of their own beers just like sitting there on tap and so you can try it like you know it's kind of the culture now is like the untapped culture you want to get as many check-ins as possible i'm saying that as someone who has like 5800 so i know i know <laughs> i know the irony there but yeah. like but uh but but um that's kind of the thing is people i these so i was texting my buddy who was um he was in michigan like at this kind of really old school brewery called kunin that's not a hype brewery at all but just makes these like old school amazing beers that like you you kind of like either you were an old school beer nerd and knew about them back then or you've just been in the game so long that you eventually heard about it like and you're like and and you've come around to like more older type old school type beers and then you then you learn about them so but but anyway so he's there and i'm at great notion this is like two ends of the spectrum here like and and uh so we're te- he's he's the one he's the guy that started the anything but great notion group so we're, yeah. i'm i'm like don't 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 he's like i'm like don't judge me i like their hazies still like and and i and i and i they had a pilsner on draft collaboration with modern times i had to try that and it was pretty damn good but um so but the the guys next to me were just doing they each had like seven five ounce pours yeah and, that's crazy and they pants. and i could and they were talking about how amazing they were like literally you could see maybe they had taken a sip from each one of them yeah. and so <laughs> Me were and, they like were they like ironic hipsters from Portland or were they oh, like oh, people totally. from no, out of town? Complete, no, no, no. I'm pretty sure they're they, they were they kept comparing all the beers to like 
like oh grapefruit sculpin and mango i'm like oh okay God. that's that's the level they're coming in at is like ballast point grapefruit yeah. sculpin so so i get it yeah these beers are yeah um, fucking on another level compared yeah, yeah, to that yeah. like if that's yeah. the beer you're drinking go to great notion they'll have like a pint like okay so um they they make a they make a beer with galaxy hops, which typically have a galaxy sort of note or a pineapple note to them. So they did that with pineapple in it. So I ordered a 10 ounce pour of that after my Pilsner. And, uh, it's funny. This is after me and my buddy were making fun. Of, oh, they, they, they get a lot of their good ratings because people are just drinking five ounces of the beer. Right. And, and then drinking like four, four, four to 10 of those. Right. And so I'm sitting there and, I'm telling my buddy, dude, this pineapple one is amazing. Like, it's just, it's not a milkshake IPA. It's just pineapple juice added to the the um, the beer. And I was like, this is perfect, like, with the Galaxy. And then by, it was a super fresh beer. They they had put it on draft, but they weren't releasing it in cans until Saturday. So it was com- very fresh. And what tends to be with these super dry hopped beers is that this, these how you get those big ar- aromatics is you uh, double dry hop, triple dry hop, whatever, is you get this hop burn when they're super fresh. And so it's pretty funny. I was super into it. And then it was not kidding. Six down. I was on my sixth ounce of that beer. The hot burn was like making my tongue numb. Like it was, it was like, this is not fun anymore. Yeah. Like this is so over, over dry hopped that like it's burning my throat. And like, so, and he's like, ha huh. So we're like laughing. Cause I'm like, I have five. Like if I would have stopped at five ounces, None of that would have happened. Right. So I'm a big proponent of drinking a full glass of a beer and yeah. not doing little tasters. Like, but the, uh, they're fine in certain situations. But sometimes you really don't know much about a beer until you have a full amount yeah, of beer. Yeah, totally um, agree. But yeah. Anyway, so that that was that was way longer beer section than I anticipated. That's all right. Great notion is. I mean, let's just, gra- keep, let me just keep. Great, talking great about notion. Beer. Great notion. It just kind of inspires a lot of debate because they're yeah. they're the 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 way they do things. Uh, kind of splits people and but they do they are very good brewers the, yeah. the beers they make are executed really well um so it, no matter if you think there's too much goddamn maple syrup in that i in that stout like it's still it, and you feel like you're getting diabetes just smelling it <laughs> but like it, it's still it's still like uh, they're good brewers and they know what they're doing well, and i respect them and and, and and even though i'm in the anything with great notion group i still yeah. i respect them and i dig their beer obviously i went and spent 20 dollars a four pack on this fucking beer <laughs> and bought three of them so obviously yeah. I, I i like what they're doing so it's so. I, I mean i it, to me it's like college football right like it's okay to have fun yeah you know it's okay exactly. to like it's beer be, like, i mean let's not let's not take this like you know so you know super seriously it's like you know the the blueberry muffin tastes like blueberry muffin it's like cool that it tastes like a blueberry muffin well, right it, like it, yeah, it smells like a baked like yeah fresh, it's the weirdest thing. It, it is it's bizarre and it's like you drink it and it's like this is kind of cool now would i want to drink pint after pint after pint of it well that's no. what you you said i told <laughs> right? you what they had available and they had cans of blueberry muffin and and juice box and 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 you go oh do you want to split uh, a mixed four pack and i'm like i'm not yeah. touching that blueberry muffin yeah anymore. i'm it's like you not know, into it anymore because you're that's like, the kind of beer the I most would... you could do is two like, yeah i was yeah. like that's the kind of beer i would put in my fridge and somebody comes over and i'm like check this out and i split a pint with them yeah exactly you yeah. know and it's like yeah you know that's fun and you know same thing with the um you know with the what the double stack right that's what it's called oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And plus, you know, that beer's like ten like percent. So yeah, and it's you like don't you don't want to drink a pint of that. <laughs> no, and so and, and you wouldn't like you would just be you, like, you oh my god, diabetes. so much syrup. Like, you would have be, diabetes by the end. It'd be like taking you know maple syrup and just like pouring it into your mouth, which would like everybody likes maple syrup. I'm, a, I'm but amazed, that would be gross. Right? I'm amazed that that beer is not like a hundred dollars. Like how much <laughs> maple syrup they put into it. Maple syrup is expensive. Yes, it and, is. And and actually, True. you can put a lot in a beer and not have it any impact because it gets fermented like right. but i think they put so much in there that it doesn't get um it the, the yeast doesn't eat it so it's basically yeah. it's just a residual sugar at that point and, yeah. and so you're tasting it all but i'm definitely a huge proponent of what you said which is to you know get like get a full-size beer and like have it um when i went to bend and i know we're like way like talking about beer probably too much but y'all skip it anyway, anyway and we'll put yeah, a time yeah, stamp yeah. So we know people fine. skip it so whatever yeah. Um, you know, the, the first time I went to bend and, you know, you're sort of, we were there for a couple of days and, and you're sort of like, Oh my God, there's so many breweries and you're just like running around and, 
And I was, you know, like, oh, how many different breweries can I go to? How many different beers can I have? And when I was done, I was sort of like, like it just, I don't know. Like I had, I had tried so much different stuff, but you know, it, none of it was like all that satisfying, you know, cause yeah. I didn't really ever. And so I, I, I don't know if I, I'm explaining it very well, but like, you I, know, I when get you, what you're saying. Yeah. When, when you're getting flight after flight, after flight, after flight. Yeah. And it's nothing like, nothing stands out. Like yeah. Nothing stands out. Nothing really, you know, whatever the, the pa- best thing. Palate I, fatigue is a real thing. Like yeah. The best thing I did was at the end of the night, we got to the end of the night, I went to crux and I was like, you know what? No more flights. I'm just going to like have a beer. And then all of a sudden I was like, I should have been doing this like the whole time, yeah, <laughs> you know, you get, like, and, and I get it. You get this desire to be like, Oh, I'm, I'm only coming to this brewery like FOMO. once a year. It's FOMO. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could miss like the amazing beer. Right. You no, know, actually like, like I, I honestly think you're going to have a f- more fun time having two pints. Yeah. 100%. Instead of like 10 tasters. Yep. Like, I decided that night, no more flights. And I haven't had one since like, this was like two years ago. I was just like, no more flights. Like I'm going to like, get a good beer and, and enjoy, you know, te- sometimes I'll get a 10 ounce pour. Yeah. Right? 10 ounce, I, think, I think 10 ounce pours are great. 10 yeah, ounce is great. If yeah. you're at a tap room, because it's yeah. enough to really like allow the flavor of the beer to develop. I agree. Yeah. But you know, then you can have, you know, maybe three or four of them instead, instead of one of, or two, instead one of one or two, or two or pints. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Cause I, my dad and I, for example, on Friday night, we're at uh, this new tap room in Yakima that's near his house. And they had a, but they, I wanted to try this, these beers from varietal, which I'll probably feature at some point. They're a beer for brewery, a really good brewery from Sunnyside, but they had four different varietal beers on tap and I wanted to try like m- multiple of them, but they did 10 ounce pours and I was like, that's perfect. And plus I had to drive. So I was like, I wanted to get full pints of them, but I had to drive and we were there for a couple hours. So I was like, I'll just get 10 ounce pours. So I had like three 10 ounce pours, you know, whatever, walked back, waited, you know, for a bit and then drove home. But like it, but it was, or drove back to where I was staying, but it was just, uh, yeah, it's 10 ounce pours are great. Um, yeah. So I don't, yeah, it's, I, I think, yeah, I, we, I had another point, but, it, oh, I have one more before we move on. You can just put a timestamp in all the people are skipping this anyway, Jeff. I have one more, <laughs> I have one more story about double stack and blueberry muffin. Okay. So I think I've told you this before, but, uh, if you go to, uh, if you go to, um, great notion they'll make if they have blueberry muffin and double stack on draft which i typically do now because they make enough beer um they'll make something for you called blueberry pancakes mm. well they'll mix the two beers <laughs> and uh i can't remember what the exact uh ratio but they have a ratio for it so one of the times i was down there or one time i i, I think you got me like a crawler of blueberry muffin yep and then someone else had gotten me a crawler of double stack and and uh so what i did it was i'm my, pretty sure i got you both y- you of got those. me both nice. pretty sure okay well yeah. well done so you uh you came to my birth that big birthday blowout share i had yeah you remember yeah so yep down Olympia. so after w- when only the degenerates were left um we were still drinking at like you know whatever in the morning and and i had those two crawlers i'm like we oh i want to do blueberry pancakes we gotta do that so we um, cracked open both crawlers, so half a, <laughs> half a gallon of beer at like two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> like of the richest beer. Right. Like, like, and so we start. I pour it out. You know, I got it all set out for everyone. We're all like a few sips in. We're like, I can't drink anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You that know, is not that is not a beer to end the night with. No, <laughs> that's not one when your tummy's already full. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, so. So I uh. mix I mix the blueberry pancakes for everyone. It was tasty. So my drunk ass like puts the cups because I'm like I don't want to waste this. So we put <laughs> the the glasses. I put the glasses back in the refrigerator. <laughs> So earlier for the party, my sister and I made a batch of my mom's potato salad, which we both love. It's like our each of our own favorite food is my mom's potato salad. And we in the morning the next day, we were like hung over. I'm like, oh, potato salad. Well, the potato salad had plastic wrap over it, so it wasn't fully exposed. But we started eating it and we're like, this tastes like the blueberry pancakes. <laughs> So that I'm sure your whole refrigerator the smelled whole like it. Refri- and other things tasted like the blueberry pancakes beer within there. That just it sitting in there had uh, had seeped into the potato salad. The entire batch of potato salad tasted like that beer. 
It was cra- it didn't get dumped in. It was from it just sitting. That's what's that's fantastic. So th- those beers are so over the top. Like that's yeah. what they do. Like if you leave an like a can or a crowler of double stack, like a- an empty one, out in your house, yeah, if you, you, you it will smell like fresh pancakes with maple syrup on them for that's a hilarious. week. Like so, if you want that smell, go to Great Notion. Get when they're selling the cans, get a can, just crack it open in your house. And it smells like delicious, but then you also want to eat pancakes all the time, so it's not. Yeah, it's making that's sad. true. All right, so we are. That is the longest. Beer <laughs> that is the we've longest beer done. segment we've had. But you know what? Let's let's let's. Uh, should we take a break? Uh, yeah, so now's get, a good time then, to take a break. Let's take a break, and then we'll get into football. And we're back. All right, 20 minutes in, and let's get to some football. (laughs) Let's talk football. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Craig, are you sufficiently entertained? Are you entertained? Dude, you know I want to drop 70. Yeah, I know. I was was clamoring for it, but you knew, like – you knew by the second quarter that was not happening. Yeah, there just wasn't. I I mean – when they ripped off those three touchdowns in the third quarter, it was kind of like eh, maybe, maybe. But they didn't score. Yeah, and you need what you really need. You need the other team to have short possessions. Well, I mean, you, you probably need like it you helps need if you get turnovers with short fields, which we did get a couple times, but kind of wasted them. Yeah, and you need like uh, you know defensive touchdowns at least one. Yeah, I think like we need that. we needed a special team slash defensive yeah. touchdown in there. Obviously, we were eleven points short, so. But yeah, so and you need a game that's or or you need a game that's like sort of reasonably contested, you know. Once you're up by six touchdowns, it's kind of yeah, you know, whatever. But it was, I would say, it was like reasonably contested because like it like because actually Gordon didn't come out until the fourth quarter. So, but anyway, so overall, uh, let's let's start overall impressions. Yeah, what, what do you think? Uh, we kind of give those right there, but. But uh, over, your overall impressions, we can talk about what kind of the, we were feeling from the general public here. But, like, what is your overall impression? Yeah, I mean, it was it was fine, you know, like and I and I know that's sort of like kind of funny to say about a six touchdown win. And, you know, where your quarterback throws for 460 yards on 39 attempts, like, <laughs> like your offense averages 10 point whatever yeah, yards per play. You know, I mean, I mean, we're really talking about back to back the two best performances of Mike Leach's tenure at Washington State. Um, and I know there's like this tendency to discount it because of who the opponents are. And, and I get that and everything else. But I mean, ha- like to do that twice um is sort of bonkers and and i you know i almost don't care who the opponent is like it's uh that is so just like ruthlessly effective and and that's by the way that includes uh you know basically two two plus quarters of backup quarterbacks and third string linemen and that kind of stuff um, so that now, I mean, obviously the, the big focus, uh, coming out of it, or the big talking point coming out of it is what's wrong with the defense. And, you know, I get a little bit of that, um, you know, but I, I think it's, I think it's a lot of what we talked about last week, which is, um, you know, you've got, you've got team, you've got a defense that looks pretty vanilla. Um, they're moving guys around a ton. I mean, one thing I noticed was Daniel Isom actually played three different positions, on Saturday. I did actually uh, didn't notice that. Yeah, he started at safety. Uh he played some corner and I did he notice also, he was in I noticed he was in some weird spots making Yeah, and he or... also played nickel at one point too. So oh, yeah. um I don't know what the reason was for that. I don't know if maybe he's now the backup at nickel if something happens to Skylar Thomas and they wanted to get him reps or whatever. I mean I'm not I'm not sure exactly what Clay's was doing there, or and, and I know Tyrese Ross uh, had a seemingly a really nice game uh, when he went to strong safety, and then Isom went elsewhere. So I don't know. Maybe they're still sort of experimenting with what their best, uh, you know, their best five guys there in the secondary are. If we if we count the nickel as a as a secondary player, um, I, I did want to. So I did yeah, kind of ask you so. Um, actually Brian Anderson and I talked about this vanilla thing after the, uh, after the game and like, what, 
like what about what they're doing makes you think that they're being vanilla like it seems like they were stemming they were they were stunting they were they were throwing blitzes in there like i don't like i i, I don't know why like do we like what about what clays is doing makes you think that he's they're being vanilla at yeah the it's i mean it seemed to me that they didn't really throw that stuff in very much until like the third quarter and i'm and that could be wrong too but that's that was the impression i had watching it um without really you know paying super close attention to exactly what was happening right um and it seemed that yep. way in the first game too so you know a lot of uh pretty you know, standard, you know, standard fronts, not a lot of blitzing. Um, and then they kind of turned it up there in the third quarter and, you know, put the game away. Um, which like I said, you know, without, I'm not charting it. So it's just sort of like, seems like an impression. Maybe there was more of it going on than I noticed, but, um, that's certainly how it seemed. And, you know, I don't know. That's that's sort of what it looked like to me. I right. you know again I don't I don't know for sure if that's true. And I'm sure Pro Football Focus could tell me, but yeah. you know whatever. I can tell you how many. Uh... They can tell me exactly how many missed tackles in space forced by moves that are out of this world by someone's mother who makes a fine cup of tea. That's right. On Sundays only. That's right. Um, but yeah, so I. Uh, um, I, I I didn't feel great, and I haven't. I I I we knew that the defense was a question mark, and and I and I don't think these first two games have put that to rest at all. No. Like there's, no. I mean they they gave up. I mean five yards of play is not good, but five yards of play to these guys is too much. And and sure. uh, uh, they were gashing that kind of that ISO run up the middle. They they mm-hmm. were so I, I actually uh, Lamont McDougal played a lot more. Yeah, he did. He was he was the second uh, yeah. nose tackle in. Yeah, and uh, they actually uh, when I was uh, in my car after the game, uh, me and my dad were getting some Arby's. We had to go check into a hotel. Um, uh, yeah, they had the meats. Visit in the hat. Um, dad got a brisket sandwich from there, by the way, and it was not not that bad. Like I was really? like, oh my God. yeah, I was like, this is not that bad. Like, I'm surprised. I, I was really like, where, where are they surprised? Like they, it's obviously was smoked somewhere else and then frozen and then sent to them. But I don't know. It wasn't that but bad. Still. Yeah. I was like, I was reasonably impressed. Okay. But anyways, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, Lamont McDougal had said they were interviewing after the game and he said that they were doing stuff that they did not see on tape from the week before. Mm hmm. So I'm guessing that ISO run was definitely something yeah. that they didn't do because that was what they were getting gashed by right. over and over and over again. Right. Like and that like, little dude, that little dude had some wiggle too. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, I think we should probably recognize that as well. But I, but I do. There's there's an element of like, I don't think that the defensive line was dominating the way that we would hope. Um, I I don't I, I'd have to go back and watch it, but I it didn't feel like they were getting a ton of push. Um, on run plays, on pass plays, I think they were fine. There wasn't a whole lot of pass plays. Uh, they, right. Northern Colorado ran the ball a lot, a lot more than they usually do. And that's pro that you know talking about the surprise element. There's probably some of that too. Well, because yeah, they probably they, expected them to pass a little more. Their their quarterback is their most talented offensive player, like by far. Like he he even has like some draft interest. Like so, it's not like so. I was expecting them to at least you know keep it even like they normally do, but. Yeah, they definitely. I don't. I haven't looked at the p- totals, but they, they've definitely ran way more than they. Oh yeah, threw. it was uh, sixteen total passes and oh, yeah. fifty-four total rushes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now some of that was sacks. There were six sacks in there. Yeah. So yeah, w- when it was a when it was a pass play, like they were getting pushed like crazy good push. Yeah. But but the run plays, they were. I think they were using what we do against us really well. I think they they game planned really well against us like they knew exactly so i don't know like i'm pretty sure that other teams are going to look at that tape like because if if their like shitty offensive line could gash us for runs like that um because what they they ended up they they ended up with a pretty good yards per carry too no it was pretty low it was uh let me look hold on well uh, it was four 
It was four. I mean, that's pretty on the nose. good. Like, I and mean, actually, there was by the way, there was only one sack too. I was I was just looking at the six well, the, quarterback yeah, I, rushes. Okay, and yeah. I, I was I was just I was I was rolling with that, but I'm like I remember one. It was uh, yeah, is uh, Ron Stone, and, and, but who was uh, kicked out by yeah. a target call. Uh, Let's just whatever. Like so, we can we'll, come back to that. We'll later. come back to that. Um, uh, what do you think? So defensive line. Mm, room for yeah, I mean. It seemed like, uh, you know, again, a lot of kind of the same stuff from the first week, over-pursuit, getting yourself out of position. Yeah. Um, Those are fixable things, though. That's a nice, that. I think they are. I really do. Like, I think these are things that but I I do, I'm just not willing to push the panic button yet. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not willing to push the panic button. I'm still definitely like, so, uh, and I'll say, like when I was talking to BA after the game, like, Last year we were roughly average defense, fifty uh, ninth in, in Bill C's uh, ratings, and I think you know roughly slightly above average average defense. Uh-huh. I could definitely s- see us falling to the slightly below average. Yeah, this side, like definitely like and and that's of course like going to happen. When you lose you. I mean, we lose Taylor Comfort. Like I don't. None of the nose tackles we have playing right now are playing as well as Taylor Comfort right. played last year. That's one hundred percent true. And then you lose Peyton Pallor in the middle. Yep. Um, and you lose Jalen Thompson on the back end. Yep. And none uh, of their replacements are as good. And, as And we are. and we had Sean Harper for the first four or five games last year. Right. He, he was our best cornerback. Right. Don't have him right now. Um. So th- there's some key pieces that are out. We knew this. We still were just kind of hoping maybe they they've they seem to just pull things together ever since uh you know the last few years they just pulled together and because last year you know herc leaves and you just think it's going to fall apart and then taylor yeah. comfort steps in and you're like all right we're all right yeah um they definitely took a they probably weren't as good as they were the year before with herc but they still were good um this year it, I, it, I just it feels like they're going to like the they're gonna there could be some major struggles yeah but could be but the and and I think the secondary is still just a complete like uh, work in progress, yeah. and that's a little scary. We'll talk about that with Houston on Friday, but or on yeah. Thursday. But that, that's that that's a little scary. But 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 yeah. So but overall, um, the defense is I think what people has people worried. The offense was ridiculously efficient, ridiculously yep. good again. Um, it's when, when you, you've punted three times in two games and you're like super mad about every one of those. Punts. Yeah. Like, you know, things are going pretty well. I like, think people are like, I, I mean, I, as, as my, I know people are like worried about the defense and, and that was the thing we were worried about going into the year. And like, I think there's what, like four, they have not scored on four possessions in two games. Yeah. But it's like, can we just like, like take a time out for a second and be like, uh, the off, like the offense could have taken a huge step back. Like, the, could be yeah, I mean, the things the offense is doing right now are otherworldly. And I know that, again, we want to be like, yeah, but look at who they're playing. Yeah, but they're doing more than what they should be doing. We, yeah. Like, pa- past really good offenses, led by Gardner Minshew, led by Luke Falk, led by yeah. Tanner Holiday, have not shred shitty teams like this. No, like, I mean, let's just look at what happened last year with San Jose State. You know, yeah, I mean, exactly. that was that was a terrible team on the order of what New Mexico State is. Yeah. And what, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, didn't do that. Well, to look, them. At, look at Portland State in 2015. You know, look at uh, absolutely like, you know, it, 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 you know, is it like Montana State in 2017? Like yeah. the, they didn't come out and light. Like those are not good teams. They didn't come out and light them right. up. I mean, they um, did. They have done exactly what you would be like. Best case scenario, they are averaging nine point six yards a play. I mean, that's like I, for people who don't look at stats all the time, like you and I do. Like, it's hard to communicate how good that is for an air raid. Like, that's sort of the knock on the air raid is like you know, it's not real explo- At least at WSU, it hasn't been super explosive. Um, it's been efficient. It really hasn't been since the very early years when teams yeah. had no idea how to defend it. Right. You know, and, and obviously other strains and variants of the air raid have been super explosive. You know, uh, you know what Holgerson does or right. what, uh, Kingsbury was doing at Texas tech with, uh, with Patrick Mahomes, you know, that sort of deal. Um, you know, obviously there are, you know, and then Lincoln Riley, you know, had one of the most explosive offenses ever last year. Right. 
So, okay, fine. But it's like, you know, for us, like it has not been an explosive offense. Um, it's been very efficient. It's been very successful in terms of like success rate, you know, meeting benchmarks to stay ahead of the chains. Um, what they're doing right now is like, I mean, we, you know, we, we've seen it. We saw it a couple times, like with Connor Halliday. We saw a couple of times with Luke Falk, um, these kinds of things pretty early in Falk's Anthony, career. Anthony Gordon through two games is averaging 11.9 yards in attempt. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. So I, you know, I know that people sort of derisively are like, Oh, going to have to win games, you know, 60 to 56. And I'm like, I, I mean, maybe, bring it on, I guess. I don't know. But <laughs> like, can we, can we just talk for a sec about how you're saying we might score 60 points a game? Like, can we just, can we just wrap our arms around that one for a second and just sort of like, like sort of appreciate that for what it is like instead of just like uh assuming it as oh well you know it's like that would be hella fun like come on let's go well let's let's talk about this a little bit um i kind of alluded to it with my song in the in the start but um there there's like a especially of fans that kind of are more like i think more of the like the in tune fans like uh like um the listeners of our podcast, um, they, they, there, there was like a, uh, I think a general sense of like disappointment after this game. Um, and I, I will give a one shout out to, uh, um, you know, and, and I know he's listening. So hi Lars, <laughs> um, Jeff, you know, Lars, I do um, know. So, Lars. so he, uh, he posited, uh, that part of it was people like you and I, who just were all in, all in on this game, like drop, you know, yeah, they're Northern Colorado's awful. I think you predicted 70 to zero. I predicted 73 to three, whatever. Um, we, so we didn't, we kind of, we, we were looking at, you know, and even Bill Connolly's stuff predicted some, like what it was like 60 point difference. It was like 64 something. to four. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, it, so we, like we, we weren't alone in that. Like it, it just, it looked like a game, but you know, like, Northern Colorado wasn't going to be like, yeah, we suck. Just let them destroy. So right. they, they changed shit up and they did. Yeah. And, but, but here's the thing, like what, why do people end up like, why do we as fans want to look for the negative in a six touchdown win? It's so weird. Like, okay. So I had the experience on Saturday of, um, I, so we went hiking Saturday morning up in Mount Rainier and uh, we're planning on being home in time to watch the game. But, of course, we got out the door late early. The hike took a little longer than expected. We stopped and got ice cream, you know, whatever, right? So I got home 2.45. So I'd already missed the first 45 minutes. So I spent, you know, the next, you know, hour or hour and a half catching up, right? Um, you know, fast forwarding through commercials, whatever. And so when you do that, you're just, you know, you're sort of like, uh, you, you know, you're, you're almost more focused on when do I fast forward? So you don't have this, you know, and, and you skip over timeouts when right. they're, you know, the, the announcers might be talking, which, you know, thank God I didn't have to listen to those two clowns any more than I had to, but it's like, who was it by the way? Oh God. I don't know the guy, the, the, the play by play guy, the analyst was, uh, Jeremy Bloom. Who's the mm, former yeah. Colorado receiver yep. slash skier. Um, Olympic skier. Right. But anyway, just, hey, it, whatever. Um, they, they kept mispronouncing names. And uh, so I'm, so I'm fast forwarding. Right. And, and again, you miss, uh, you end up kind of skipping past some of the banter, you know, well, like when, uh, when the, you know, when the, the targeting review was going on, I was fast forwarding through that and I'm like, shit, this thing's not over yet. Like, you know, I'm like, again, we could talk about that, but it's like, um, you know, so you miss a lot of the the sort of narrative building that goes on during the game, not just from the announcers, but also like, you know, uh, I think we've talked about this before on the podcast, but, you know, we have a Slack channel for all the Coug Center writers. And that's where we do, you know, m the vast majority of our chatting, right, with each other. And it's one of the cool things about being a writer at Coug Center is, you know, all these guys who write, we also all just sit around and bullshit about football or life or whatever. And so during a game, everybody's popping in and saying how they're feeling and thinking. And so I'm off of Slack because I'm watching the game, right? So I miss all that narrative building that goes on with the announcers, with our writers, with Twitter, right? I'm not on Twitter while I'm catching up. 
And so then I catch up and then I flip over to Slack and then I'm like catching up on the messages, you know, I'm like reading them as I'm going and I'm like, holy hell, this is really negative. What the heck? You know, I'm just like, wait, we're up by like six touchdowns. Like, what are we? I mean, yeah, it was a little like dodgy the first half, but I mean, come on. Like it wasn't well, yeah. ever really in doubt. And then, well, you, you know, it's, it, dodgy the first half. So if you think about it, if you flip the halves around, then that narrative building is completely different. Totally. It was 100%. 30, it was 35 to seven in the second half. It was 24 yep. to 10 in the first half. Yep. If it's 35 to seven at halftime, like it was against New Mexico State. Right. We've already, we're already, yeah. We're, we're, and we're satisfied. We're crushing this game. This, this thing's over. Let's, let's drink. Let's, let's go, let's go to our tailgates. Let's do whatever. Right. Oh, and then, and then it's later. Oh, we won 59 17. Great. That's awesome. Whatever. But right. when it's 24 10 at half, that feels like a game, you know? That, like, right. I mean, it didn't feel like a game because you're like, there's right. no way they're going to come back from two touchdowns like they just don't because they're like correct do, they're doing all they can to like score you know it's like but it's just like and, and you know that we're not going to stop scoring so it's like you know that like we're fine at two touchdowns whatever but in the game like you know that you're definitely like you feel like the every time and and part of it is the expectation that is built like when you come to games like this and not go to them or watch them on tv or whatever like because you know the team's gonna win, you you always want this like kind of um, extraordinary experience. Like you're always hoping to get like this extraordinary experience. Sure, because you can go to a baseball game and you're like, whatever. Maybe something cool will happen. Maybe not. Whatever. There's a million of these things. But football, there's only twelve or thirteen yep. or fourteen yep. a year, and so you're just like, you're just hoping that like every game you like cherish and you hope is amazing. So this one you're coming in, it's like the only way it's going to be extraordinary is if we lose or if we just blow the doors off them, like 97 Louisiana, whatever style, like, like it's just like, like to where like people still talk about that game because it was so bad. And I think people are hoping for something like that. Like, Oh yeah, we could have just did like, do you remember? But now like people probably never talk about this game again. Like there was no, no, there was nothing in particularly interesting about it. Like it was just your, your straight up FBS team beating the shit out of an FCS team, um, FCS team trying their damnedest to like do something, keeping it relatively close for, you know, it, it, relatively close being a two touchdown spread at halftime, right? Right. Um, like, rel- like closer than you would think, and I think because we came out on fire last week too. I think that kind of we were kind of expecting that to happen again, because yeah. last week you know like the thirty five to seven. At halftime, the narrative was set. We're crushing. We're beating the shit out of this team. The only thing that would have changed it is if New Mexico State and score came out and scored like two touchdowns in a row to like cut it to two, like cut it to two scores or whatever. But that didn't happen. But you're sitting there all halftime. It's twenty four ten. You're staring at the score. Like I want, I wanted to be at forty two or something at this point. Right. You know? Right. I'm, like I wanted them to be, I, I, I don't think they should score on us at all, you know, whatever. Right. And so, so you, you've built that narrative by halftime and then you're looking for reasons to add on to that in the second half. So when they, they didn't score until late in the fourth again, like, but they, they got, they busted off that big run. Right. And, and it's like, oh, here we go again. They're doing it again. And like, yeah, so they're, have, they're, their guys are better than our backups. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. You know. So so it's so you you add to it, and I was totally like I was not feeling that great after the game, and I was like, why the hell do why am I like pissy about this? Like I don't like I was trying to like I was talking to my dad, and I was like, I'm gonna tr- I gotta I gotta try to not be mad about this fucking fifty nine to seventy. Yeah. Like why am I mad about this? Like we won by six touchdowns. Yeah. Like we like and I was like me and my dad were both at the Portland State loss and the Eastern loss. I'm like what what like I don't. <laughs> Like, why are, why are, why don't, my dad didn't care. My dad's having a great time. Like, he's right. like, whatever. He was just mad about the refs mostly, but, you know. <laughs> about that bullshit targeting but, but, call. But, but my dad's always, that's, that that's his thing, like, through, and he's, I, I've showed him how to download this, so I'm, he's going to be top. But, like, when my yeah. sister was playing basketball growing up, like, he's always been on the refs. My dad is that's big. Funny. He's not on the refs guy. <laughs> like, he's got his eye on them. I'm watching you, ref. But, yeah, so, I will say, so. 
um oh you know, here you know like uh any more thoughts on that kind yeah, of yeah uh, i mean that? i guess i'll just say like i think that some of it also is when when you know that the outcome is not in doubt then you're sort of looking for everything else yeah and it, so you know you're 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 not thinking of this game in terms of the result you're thinking of this game in terms of well what does it mean for the future right and you know we've sort of been uh conditioned to think that hey you know like past performance is somewhat indicative of of future performance right um but you know i mean it, you sort of alluded to it with the fact that there's only so many games Right. And, you know, one of the things with football is that every, you know, this is one of the things I wrote in my Monday column, which has not published yet, but probably will be published by the time a lot of people listen to this. You know, I was like, look, every game is its own little snowflake and it's, it's, it's got its own little quirks and you know, things. Yeah. And it's like, you know, reading too much into what's there. Right. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I just think you. It's hard not to, though, because the it, it is hard. once a week. No and doubt. Then you. And then what happens for that week? Well, like, all and you that's have to think about it, you know. Right. That's the and that's the magic of football. You know, it's why football is such a popular sport is because it, it lends itself to that, right? You everything is you know, important. Right. Everything's important. Every game matters, and then you have all week to to like to to obsess over the game, right? And I, you know, I always try to remind myself um, of Tony Bennett's second team. Um, the first, team, so I know this, that kind of maybe seems a little off the tracks, but I think, you know, I can bring it back around, you know, the, the first team came so out of nowhere and we were just all on this ride, like, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing ever. Right. And it was, and, but then you have the next season, virtually everybody's back. Right. So there's this expectation that they're going to be better. And, you know, as they're going through, say the non-conference season that ultimately those games don't really mean a whole lot in because they're probably going to win them all or, or almost all of them. Right. Right. And the only thing that's really there, especially looking at the PAC 10 at the time, you knew that, you know, the PAC 10 was bonkers good with, you know, Stanford and UCLA, um, UCLA Arizona. And like, yeah. You just knew that those teams were really, 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 really good. Oregon, Arizona state. Yeah. Right? And so the only thought was, you know, Hey, are they, are they going to be ready for that? Right. Are they going to be ready for that? And I just remember going through that non-conference season and thinking like, just kind of over and over, uh, like, what does this mean? What does this mean? And I remember uh, there was one game against Boise State that was at Boise State. It wasn't on TV. And, um, you know, it was just like closer than it should have been and like all this stuff. And, I, oh, my God, what does it mean? And and then like and, and every game was like, what does it mean? And then when they when they played UCLA and and, um, you know, does this mean that they can't compete at the highest level? And it because UCLA sort of athletically bullied them and uh, and I just remember like getting to the end of the season and thinking like, man, I didn't even actually really enjoy this, at least not the way I felt like I should have, where it was like, holy shit, this team is amazing and they're winning a whole bunch. And like, like, just like, like, like enjoy that, <laughs> you right. know, along the way. And, um, you know, so I try really hard not to get too caught up in you know, the details when they do win, you know, it was like last year with Cal or whatever. It's like, okay, so Cal bullshit happens and you've got John Wilner out here going, Oh, they should have lost. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. They didn't lose and they won and I was there and it was fun as hell. So screw you. And it's, you know what I mean? It's like, just, just like enjoy the ride, enjoy this golden era, enjoy the fact that the team was not totally sharp and still won by 42 points and just, you know, like don't like leave the worrying about the development to the coaches who are paid handsomely to fix that stuff. And we know that they're good at it. So I'm just going to be like, you know what? Two wins in the bag, not really sharp, but you know, kind of walkovers. And it's so cool that we're in a spot where we just can show up and annihilate a couple of really bad teams. Right. I mean, is that going to work against Houston? Probably not. I, Look, I'm not like a lot of people. I don't think Houston's actually that good. So I, I'm, not, I'm not as worried about Houston as a lot of people. I mean, maybe that's famous last words, but that is how I feel. 
but it's like, you know, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to obsess over what Derek King might do. I'm just, you know, I'm like, yeah, this is fucking cool, man. Like, like we show up and Anthony Gordon throws for 10, 11 freaking yards per attempt or whatever. It's just like, this shit just blows my mind and I'm trying to give it the proper appreciation. Good. Good. Yeah. I think, um, that's, yeah, you and I have talked about that a lot. I I think that one one final thing on this, I I think that we as Coug fans, uh, have a certain insecurity and we're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. That's absolutely true. It's, it's, it makes it hard to enjoy the good times because, we find ourselves to have this tendency to just be like, it's all coming crashing down tomorrow. Like it's, yep. it's all cause it, it's done. It's happened before and it's going right. to happen again. It's all like Mike Lee or Mike, Mike price is going to leave for yeah. wherever Mike Leach is going to leave for wherever Tony Ben's going to leave for wherever, like it, it, like nothing lasts yeah. and it's all going to come to the end. And, and Derek so, King's a running quarterback and you know what those guys do to us. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's, uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, let, let's enjoy it. Um, the, as I've gotten farther away from the game, I'm. It it took me about like I don't know. I, I was probably about two hours after the game. There, there's definitely some thing. Like, if you are looking at it and saying, if you're analyzing it and saying, yeah, that uh, the defense is probably what we were worried about. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's probably not as good. As, yeah, it's not there. Yeah, it's not as good as last year. And and but we knew that when Jalen Thompson left, we knew that was not like that was going right. to happen. Like, right. And like, uh, that's why we made fun of that ESPN writer for leaving the, you know, Jalen Thompson left, but they still could be better. And it's like, no, like, no, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um, but yeah, so we're, that's where we're at. But the offense is, we thought the offenses would be good, but the offense is already like, has already performed even better than I imagined. So, right. Like, so there's a balance there. So let's just enjoy it because actually scoring touchdowns is way more fun than shutouts. So yeah, put them points I, on the I board. I can confirm. Yeah. Scoring yeah, touchdowns is most fun. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I guess we can get it. Like it actually fired up the crowd quite a bit, that uh, that targeting call, uh, because uh, the fumble came right after it. That's like the most fired yeah. up the crowd was in the second half. Yeah. Because um, the students that had already – The call was super bullshit. The, the student yeah. had already left. Yeah, so that just that, that one last line about leading with your head with int- whatever, it's like intent, forcible intent or – I don't. Yeah. But here, I, they whatever, showed the man. replay over and over again in the stadium, and it looked like he was – yeah, he he's leaning with his head, but he also he was going for the middle. Yeah, he's trying so not natu- to hit the other guy in the head. So naturally, like, how <laughs> can you? Is he supposed to like squat down and like 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 kind of yeah. kind of like frog walk? Like, to, if like, he dives at his knees, that's also a penalty. By yeah, the way. so he's hitting him exactly where he's supposed to in the chest. And so just by nature of how human bodies work, by doing that, he's going to lower his head. Here's but here's he also. What's was Here's leading where we're with gonna his end shoulder. Up. He had his yeah. shoulder out. His shoulder was the first thing to hit. Yeah, like, I so can tell you exactly where we're going to end up with this someday. And I don't know when, and I don't know how. But and I and I'm not sure why coaches aren't teaching it yet. But um, when you tackle a court, well, like okay, well, you see it in the NFL. Oh, little, by the way, right? John Wilner said it was letter of the law. He needed to be <sighs> whatever, he, whatever. <laughs> you I'm know, pretty sure he's on the payroll. At this yeah, pretty sure. Um, he just, whatever reason to hate, I'm just Wazoo. kidding. No, you're not John. I, I no, know you're not, but whatever reason joke, to hate but... Wazoo, that's what he's going to find. So, okay. So even in the NFL, they, they put this new rule in last year that you can't, if you, uh, tackle a quarterback or sack a quarterback or hit a quarterback, you can't land on top of them. Right. Because right. you might crush them and separate their shoulder or whatever. Okay. So you had all these like defensive linemen doing all this crazy shit oh, yeah. to make wild. sure they didn't land on anybody. Yeah, right. Like they wild. would, they would hit the guy and then they would like, be like roll. on their way to the ground. And then they would like roll off as they were heading toward the ground or they would jump like at the last second to like launch themselves off of the quarterback after really hitting the quarterback. Things, right. It, yeah. it was sort of like hilarious and absurd all at the same time. I, you know, I think if you're, if I'm a coach in college right now, um, I, I'm just, I'm just teaching my guys. You can't blow up a quarterback. Like you just have to not blow up quarterbacks. Um, yeah. un- unless, unless you're just willing to say, 
you know, unless you're willing to accept that you're probably going to get a guy tossed. Well, and, and well, the thing is, like uh, Stone hit him roughly the exact same way, f- sacking him earlier. Right. And, but he was facing away from him. But so it's it such looked, a fine line, right? Like because he was facing away from him. Right. That the basically the the quarterback's head didn't dip down into his, so it didn't look as bad. Yeah. Like and so it was just it yeah it because he it was kind of weird it it looked exactly the same he had the same he got the same rush like like what what's he supposed to do like yeah. no one picked him up he's well, running he's fast dude also fuck he's fast like yeah. by the way that was awesome. oh yeah no, like he's he's in <laughs> he's in crap. my Monday column oh yeah like that was impressive and also yeah. I just want to point out because I I I, I, I shared this information with someone in the stands who so he is not suspended for the first half of the next game yeah i was unclear about that so he if he accumulates three over the course of the season he's suspended for a game right so that's That's the new rule i thought they did away with the other thing yeah and then did this thing see i didn't so i so i was i i thought they weren't kicking people out right away though so I thought they're they are, still doing that. They're still doing that. They are so, still but doing you're that. not suspended for the next half. You have to accumulate three to be suspended and then for you're a game. Suspended for a game. Yeah. yeah, it's. I I think they're going to have to come up with a technique though for guys when you've got a shot like that. How do you do it? And and I suspect because here's the thing. Like if he so first of all, okay. So you ask what's he supposed to do? All right. I I maintain that what he did was an effort to avoid going helmet to helmet. It looked like it. That that's what he was trying to do is he was trying to avoid going helmet to helmet. Okay. So he lowers his head. Well, now he looks like he's using the crown of his helmet as a weapon, right? Okay. So now what he has to do is when he lowers his head to try to not hit the guy helmet to helmet, he now needs to get his head off to the side far enough that he doesn't spear the guy, but also not too far that he actually ends up you know, getting out of position and, and more or less running past the guy, right? Right. Or hitting him with a glancing blow with his shoulder or whatever. And it's like, I, you know, it, it moves so fast. I don't think there's any way to do this. I'm guessing they're going to have to come up with some kind of technique where as you're rushing the guy, you almost sort of wrap your arms around his waist and then do kind of like a freestyle wrestling takedown. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, can you visualize what I'm what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, you can't slam him. And you can't slam him. I mean, not, not slamming him because you don't want to slam him. <laughs> yeah. So you have but to at take least him if you did, it, down wouldn't, be, to the it ground. wouldn't be targeting. But you, but you know what I mean? Like, I think I, I think, you know, they're almost going to have to but come up with something to, like to balance that. it. The refs need to call the end of gra- like which we saw. Uh, yes. In 2015. Uh, against Oregon on that final drive, like Luke Falk got called for being in the grasp, even though, like almost immediately. Um, right. And he threw the ball away, but you don't see it, but it was so like controversial because that's so rarely called. And so that like the, the basically the refs need to balance it by being like, okay, he's got his hands on him. It's, it's, right. it's done because like otherwise, because you're taking away like the ability for, because people freak out when, because we'll have these free runners at the quarterback and they'll kind of slow up a little bit and then the quarterback will avoid them and be right. able to run or throw the ball. Right. It's well, it's, it's a product of like, cause they, they know that pretty much there's there like, it, it's, it's like there's, you know, a 50, 50 chance that if you hit that quarterback, you're going to do something wrong. Right. At this point, like it really is like 50 50. Yeah. Like, and, and so you kind of have to slow down because you just got to, you have to, because these, if you're a full blast running, it's going to look violent. And so they're going to look for a penalty. Like right. that's, and so, cause that's what happened by the way. That's exactly like, it. They the ran. ref didn't even throw a flag. So yeah. And by the way, it was <laughs> so, know? so late the only reason that it got reviewed was because, because they false start. started on the exactly. next. So that gave them an extra like 20 seconds to look at it. It was the stupid. It was the, yeah. in, in the stadium. It was like, what the fuck is going and, on? And then you're like, looking at what, it for 10 minutes and it's like, and what, luckily they started, they started showing the, the, the hit. That's the only, cause we were like, what is like, what yeah. is going on? And then they start showing the hit on the board and we're like, oh, he's fine. They're not going to call yeah. that targeting. If you have to squint that hard to find it, you shouldn't be finding it. 
I mean, I have, I have. I mean, we all that they have. They are going to find it. Like, we, we all know have, at this point they are. We all have Gessen's hit on Minshew last year right. burned in our skulls. Right. Like so. Like I, I see that that literal helmet to helmet launch, like clear as day, right in front of a ref, and I'm like, yep. that's not targeting. This isn't. This is definitely not targeting. Like he right. hit him. Like his head is off to the side. Like he's hitting him on the shoulder. He hit him in his chest. You're like this is a rule now. Like yeah. Like you. I mean, I didn't didn't so, see all the rule stuff that was. I mean, I, I've looked at the rule. I didn't see everything that was supposed to be there. Like I just. I don't know. It's it's it, it's like any other replay. I mean, you know my stance on replay. I think replay is like the worst thing to happen to sports in sports history. Pretty well, much. and the target the targeting replays are super long because 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 the player is getting tossed. Like they right. So they it's frame by frame, frame, frame by frame. You can see anything you want frame by frame. Absolutely. You know it, whatever it is that you want to see, you can see it. And then the other thing is that we know we know we know for a fact. That the referees are asked to err on the side of player safety, so that's why you're gonna get more of these. And there, and it was funny too because this new rule, like I, I saw the Big Ten head of officials uh, in a story that I read was like, this should result in a reducing of targeting penalties by one third. And I'm like, yeah, right, right. No, it's never gonna happen because all of these guys are graded on throwing flags. They're graded on throwing flags. Like if you don't throw the flag and it was whatever, they're going to be it's, like, it's like, we're going to mark you down because a, you didn't throw the like, flag. It's like hitting the quota for traffic tickets. At, Ex- at it's exactly police, like, like we know there's people station. speeding out yeah. there. You better be finding them. You know, it's, it's, it's so like it's, it's busted. And, and you, you know, you, you go to a replay and you take 10 minutes frame by frame by frame by frame. It, yeah, you know, if your incentive is to call the targeting penalty and you go frame by frame by frame by frame, you're going to find it. Like some way, one way or another, you're going to find it. And the longer that thing drug on, the more you knew it was going to go bad for the kooks. Yeah. Like it just like when it's going that long and they're like, eh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Well, they're going to go, well, if we don't know, we're going to call it. And that's it particularly in a game like that, that's out of control and whatever, like, you know, I mean, all of those things, they're human. All of those things enter into their brains and the incentive is there for them to eject someone, not the other way around. And the replay system just makes that more likely, not less likely, like it was sort of, you know, thought to be this year with, Oh, we've tweaked it so that whatever, you know, it's, no, no. Replay just makes it more likely you're going to make something happen. And and I and I know that you probably are particularly um, raw on this because you sat at a Seahawks game where they had a fuck ton of replay reviews. Uh uh-huh. took Forever. So, oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh, it was so great, <laughs> man. We were on the first drive, and the the new coach of the Cincinnati Bengals decided he just had to challenge a ten yard completion on first down at midfield on the first <laughs> damn drive of the game. God. And then Pete goes and ch- Pete goes and challenges a defensive pass interference. I'm like, I I got on Slack and I'm like, have they overturned any defensive pass interference calls during to. preseason? Yeah. No. Well, of course they're not going to. Like, what's the guy going to do? He's going to get on there and look at the replay and go, yeah, this official that I work with, he like, yeah, he blew that call. I'm going to overturn it. Like, no, come on, referees. Like, they're like police, man. They stick together. It's like they are not going to screw each other at all. Ever. All right. Before we uh, spend another three hours on ban ah. replay, ah. hashtag ban replay. Ban replay. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's take a break. But we have some fun stuff. Oh yeah, we we, got, we have. I don't know if y'all were up at one thirty a.m., but we're gonna on Saturday morning or Sunday morning. But we're gonna need to talk about that. But let's go for a break first. And we're back. Oh man, Jeff. <laughs> so I, I think I think we're gonna do a weekly kind of breakdown of what happened in the Pac twelve, but oh, 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 oh my goodness. <laughs> so first I'm gonna start our 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 our, our, our friend our friend Brian Floyd uh yeah. was tweeting about the game today and and Which I, by the way, I did not stay up to watch, did you? Um I'll get into that in a second. Okay. All right. Um so he said uh he tweeted, I'm, I'm still mad about this one, showing a screenshot of 6059. 
Never play Cal, just don't do it at all costs. And he said, I can't even make fun of Washington losing because I know the pain of Cal Week all too well. I'm sorry, Brian. I sorry, can Brian. definitely make fun of yep. Washington losing. Yep, definitely. I have no problem with that whatsoever. So, yeah. So, did did I stay up? Absolutely, I did. So, oh, um, so, I'm so uh, glad you did. So, uh, we were at uh, uh, BA's tailgate, and then it was kind of fading. And so, my dad and I left, but we were feeling pretty good. We were staying downtown at a hotel. I was like, Dad... You wanna you wanna just go to my office and you know stay up until the U Dub game ends. Like at that point, I think U Dub was up. Like it was halftime and it looked like they were gonna win. You know, like whatever. Um, so we we did the long one. You know, like twenty five thirty minute walk to my office from the ta- tailgate, and um, I think we stopped up uh, at my uh, hotel briefly to uh, you know like go to the bathroom or whatever, like and um, drop off some stuff, and then we get we get to my office. You know. Order the chicken strips, which is, you know, I love the chicken strips at my office with some ranch. And that's like my only, the only time I'll eat a bunch of ranch is like with chicken strips and when I'm drunk. Um, yeah. But then I'm all about it. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so we get there and we get there like in cows up 17, 16. And we're like, uh-huh. what the fuck? Yeah. What happened in this game? So I literally actually have not watched your highlights. I have no idea how it went from like. 14 to three or whatever to 17, 16. Yeah. So we watch, so there's, yeah, I was kind of surprised. It was fairly dead for like a Saturday night and a football weekend. Like there was, there was maybe like 15 people in, in the bar and my office is fairly pretty big, pretty good sized room. Yeah. Like, so it felt pretty yeah. empty. Um, so dad and I were drinking some breakside pills and good stuff, man. Um, I, I've ruined my dad, by the way, I wanted to just order some fucking Coors light for like, 14 bucks a pitcher but we had to get the 22 dollar pitcher breakside pilsner because i have turned my dad into a goddamn beer snob um, <laughs> i'm like dad like the breakside pilsner is good but we're already drunk and yeah. he's like no i don't want to drink that i'm like i will not touch that i'm like what what did i do i created a, you monster. Created a monster um but but anyway so uh so we're we 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 popped out. There's a group of uh, Coog fans. They're obviously like invested. We're invested. Yeah, we're watching it. Oh, that would have see that would have been so and that fun. that last Cal drive was just like it was because Chef's Pete kiss. was like that like Cal just gashed them to get down to the goal line. Cal does something so du- like weird. They they centered the ball. And then ran another play, which then took the took it off center. <laughs> and by the way, they scored a touchdown on that play for sure. I don't know how that didn't get called a touchdown. Like, um, I don't know if you've seen the highlights, but I I have not. Was this so was th- this like the touchdown th- that Gerard Wick should have scored against them back in? But it was more. It was more obvious than that. Like it was he was laying across the goal line. Like it was it was football in hand half the body across the goal line as well. Like, but, but it was just kind of an odd angle. And so when they did the replay, they just didn't have a look. And so he was on like the one inch line. So, but then Pete was just doing an awful job calling timeouts, like just letting, like he tried to ice the kicker by waiting longer to call the timeout, which then, but he was, it's a 17 yard field goal. And right. yes, these are missed by college kickers. But at the same time, I think at that point, you just got to assume he's going to make it and you should be conserving as much time for your offense. And save your time. So he basically, and, that's like 10 yeah. seconds run off the clock. And so by the time they kick the field goal, there's like 12 seconds left or something. Right. And so, oh man, makes that field goal. We're all celebrating, high fiving. Well, first when we thought it was a touchdown, big celebration, high fives everywhere. Because it would, it would have been with about like 25 seconds left. But then we then that got called back, and then you know they kicked a field goal. Then uh, then they lose. Uh, my office plays a WC fight song. <laughs> <laughs> so and I was so proud. Like so, yeah, yeah. I have a, I have actually so I have like I have a video, but I, you just need to hear I like this the monster I've created in my father. Um, uh, what what he so what he he was just saying like. He was just yelling "Huskies lose," but here's here's a little audio clip of of my dad after after. What's that, Dad? Go Huskies! Oh shit! Sorry, oh, my cut off. battery battery cut off. We'll do it again. Shit, that was annoying. I got low power. 
twenty percent. Stay one hundred, people. Stay one hundred. <laughs> so yeah, like that was I love it. That was that was a beautiful. That was a fun time. But like yeah. so, you know, and like we're petty. We we always are absolutely so we're petty. I embrace the pettiness. Like absolutely. I don't care. I don't even care if it means cow might actually be pretty good. I don't care. I yeah, like if we care. if we lose at cow, who cares? We always lose it. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like losing at Cal is always on the board. Like so I want everyone else to lose to Cal, especially you dub. Like especially you dub. And yeah. that was just glorious. Like it was glorious. Like it was so funny. Like yeah. and oh my God. And and then you know, I'll let you talk about it, but why was the game on at one thirty in the morning? Yeah. Well, Sarah and I had um, gone, so we, I, you know, I watched the, watched the Cougs, wrote my recap, watched the first half of the Sounders, and then uh, we were like, the, yeah, yeah, well, that's that's a different thing, but whatever. Uh, and we had, we had gone hiking yesterday morning. On the way back, we went out to Mount Rainier on the way back. Uh, we left the kids with Sarah's parents out in Eatonville and came home, and so I watched the Cougs, and then we, we decided, hey, let's let's go get some dinner. So we're driving down the road. Well, as we're driving down the road, this is when the lightning starts. And it was like, I mean, down, down – and I live down south, right, you know, like you do. Um, and, and it was pretty, like, pretty bonkers, <laughs> like really, like, clear lightning strikes pretty close to where we were. And then we get into the restaurant and I'm, I'm watching the, you know, the Huskies are on TV and you know, they get whatever, five minutes into the game and I see everybody leaving the field and I'm like, Oh, they must've gotten the lightning up there. And so, you know, watching them leave the field. Well, by the time I, you know, I got home, uh, it was, you know, nine 30 or whatever. I'm watching USC dismantle Stanford and I flip it over to the Husky game and realize they still haven't started yet. And I'm like, okay, well, finally, like at whatever, 10, 15, they say, okay, we'll be starting back up at 10, 30. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what? They're actually going to do this. Yeah, it's like Which the I, first quarter at that point. Yeah. It, like, like literally five minutes into the game. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, and I guess they had no choice, right? I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's just no way. I'm to, sure they looked at the schedule. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there was and, no way to make yeah. up the game. They would have had to do it today. That was good. That would have been its own little cluster. And so. Um, so they, you know, just decided to press ahead, which I, I think was, was a really terribly stupid decision, but whatever, that's, that's what they, they really should have, you know, pushed it into today. I mean, I, I, I don't know what, uh, sort of rejiggering that would have taken for a lot of stuff, but you know, when, uh, when, when we're constantly told that the welfare of student athletes is the number one priority, I would guess that playing a football game well into the next day is really not what's best for student athletes. So Probably what would have been best is, you know, just giving them a night of sleep and playing it the next day. But, you know, that's not how but, these but, things work. But but uh, do you think we should let you dub blame the Oh yeah. The yeah. The blame loss? away. Blame the lightning. Yeah. You know, we're we're not allowed to blame the snow, but they can blame the lightning. That'd be that was funny. But but I will say this, so so an odd funny thing was uh, yesterday on the hike we actually came across a brown bear on the hike now not not totally near us like about a hundred yards away he was so the hike we went on there were tons like like tons and tons of wild mountain blueberries um and so we come around this corner and there's a brown bear like peeling off you know just sitting there chomping away on all these blueberries about a hundred yards away so i guess that was a good omen for the old uh california golden bears and you know, it was a good day for bears all around. That bear got a little fatter eating some blueberries, and these bears, you know, pulled their cow bullshit on the huskies, and and everybody wins, right? Right. I I, I should uh, on the topic of the bears, you know, since that was the team we played. That is um, true. I, I did want to bring. I think we can put the husky. We 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 made fun of them enough. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, Y'all lost. Uh, that was we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about the rest of the scores in a second here, but. So Weldworks uh, Brewing in Greeley, Colorado, where uh, Northern Colorado is located, um, read my oh, yeah. preview and saw. We that talked about I this on Friday them. too. On yeah, the Friday podcast. They uh, they uh, um, basically um, put a wager down and uh, of some of their beers uh, with me, and uh, they radio silence from them so far. So <laughs> I don't know if they're going to deliver, but we'll see, man. Huh. 
But yeah, yeah. so uh, anyway, Poor so the, the, the rest of the Pac-12, we got uh, we got a, a, another loss in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, that's Oregon State. Yeah, so whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but, I mean, what about, like, the big t- one Oregon is... Oregon State totally blew that, too, though. Yeah, but, yeah the big uh, one's uh, USC and Stanford. Uh, that was... USC that was surprising. Like they have a clue on offense now. Yeah, that was, figure. that was that was a surprise. Yeah, that was... I, it, it was surprising in the sense that, again, like, you know, that they look like they have a clue on offense. Well, it, I, just not, thought, I just thought that Stanford would bullshit their way into something there. But they just looked... They just, especially second half, just yeah. And by the end of the done. season, I'm sure they'll have their nine wins or whatever, and we'll all just go like, "Boy, that's how did Stanford end up with nine but, wins?" But USC like, for all that you know, everyone was talking about how they were looking at one and five. Yeah. Now they're two and zero, oh and yeah, you know what? Maybe they're maybe they're a legit contender now. Well, and particularly with uh, you know backup quarterback, you know yeah. they. Yeah, they looked uh, they looked pretty explosive, and like I said, they looked like they actually had a clue on offense. So kudos to Graham Harrell, um, the guy who is my early favorite when Mike Leach ever leaves us to yeah. come up here. But that's another conversation for another day. The other and uh, yeah, the other ones worth mentioning: Colorado. Um, yeah, not thankfully knocking Nebraska out of the top yeah. twenty-five, which they never belonged in in the first place. Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, Colorado. But that's uh, but that's the good thing, right? I mean, if yeah. we're like Nebraska never belonged there, okay, fine. Except like they were there, and so now the Pac-12 has a win over a ranked opponent. Yep. Even if Nebraska, I mean, ends I, I mean, up, I guess Nebraska ends up five and seven or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if Nebraska wins three games, obviously that doesn't really help a whole lot. But I mean, if Nebraska ends up, like you said, five, six wins, whatever, like it's still going to be thought of as Colorado beat a ranked team from another conference. And it was a great. I mean, it, obviously, and that, if, that, that let's say a, Nebraska pulls off a you know an upset over. I mean, they probably can't beat Oklahoma, but or sorry, in the Big Ten, I mean. Um, you know, maybe they beat Ohio State or something or, or Michigan. And you, you know what I mean? Like some kind of, you know, you start getting these transitive things. And even though like you and I intellectually know the transitive stuff is bullshit, right. the voters don't. No, we're we're I only mean, one. John Wilner's John Wilner is like uh, the most transitive. Our, our, our defense ever. is better than Alabama's. Right. Because we held. We held the Mexico, Mexico State to seven to points. One touchdown. A- Alabama, and Alabama gave up 10 gave points. Up 10. Yep. That's how this thing works. And we're right? only one point worse than Alabama on a neutral yeah. field. Yeah. So take that. We want Bama. Yeah. But it's true. I mean, like these voters, a lot of these voters, they do look like transitive things. This team beat this team, beat this team. And so, you know, it must mean whatever, and which is stupid and irrational. And it, it's it's a really silly way to go about it. But, you know, because our little pea-sized brains can't really make sense of all this weirdness in any other way. That's what people do, and so if Nebraska goes out and beats somebody, that's a you know that's a feather in the conference's cap. Yeah. So that's a good thing. And and it's it's, a good thing. I think it's really cool they played that series. I hope they keep doing it. That is that yeah. That, 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 that's a great Hell college yeah. football rivalry. I know that. Yeah. I have a I have a good buddy who's a Colorado alum. He was super stoked they were playing. He went out to he went out actually to the game in uh, Lincoln last year. And but yeah. like, uh, but yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. They're playing it, and uh, it's cool that Colorado came out on top in both games. Um, so good for them. Yeah. Um, San Diego state beat UCLA. UCLA looks like they're bad. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, like we might be, I mean, we might be cakewalking to four and oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, you're, we'll you're talk about Houston. About I know people Houston are worried about but, Houston, but, uh, but I'm like, but you, Utah, but still Utah did their, their thing against Northern Illinois. I mean, it was just kind of a, you know, it had a slow start, but they, but kind of, whatever they beat the shit out of them eventually. Yeah. And then, well, and then, you and, know, again, when we talk about the transitive stuff, yeah. we'll look at what BYU did this weekend. Oh yeah, man. Right. Oh, we were watching that one at the tailgate again with our ironic sec chant. That was just give us those, keep giving us those moments, please. Yeah. Cause it, it's, it's great. Like it's, it's great. Like Tennessee two games at home to start the year, Georgia state and BYU. BYU is not like, it's a respect like it's like yeah you lost BYU it's not crazy the Georgia State loss it was on top of them losing on top of the Georgia State loss but right. yeah but yeah BYU going to an SEC school in front of a hundred thousand people and and winning um, after getting spanked by Utah a week before yep you know if you want to get transitive about it that looks good but I mean obviously yep. you know uh, we're it, 
we're fine to like we're happy to see all sec teams lose but it like you said last week it really only matters what the top three teams do but um yeah other games oregon was clearly pissed off (laughs) yeah pj called that one in his gambling column he was like a team that's probably feeling a little too good about itself versus a team that's super pissed off and uh, 77 to six drop 77 yeah see oregon (laughs) oregon is a good drop 70 candidate because they play so fast like that yeah they're gonna create they always have a couple more possessions than we would yep so um but yeah and so they don't I mean, I think they did probably score every time they had the ball, but they don't. I don't think they did actually, not in the first quarter, but after that, they just laid it yeah. on. Yeah. Um, but and it, and I think they wanted to continue to just. I I think they wanted to score on every single position. Yeah. It's like all the way until the end of the it's, game. It's like when U Dub played Oregon, uh, like uh, when they ended the streak right, right, a few right, right, right. The streak, <laughs> and they were just, just like, "No, we want to score every possession. Yeah. We don't care how yeah. bad of a beatdown this is." And then we got. Yeah, I mean, all in all, good weekend for the Pac-12. And well, we do. I, I mean, we did have Arizona, Northern Arizona total basketball score, sixty-five yeah. to forty-one. God, Arizona. Arizona's. Why defense, can't we play man. Arizona this year? I know, again. right? Although Arizona State whopping nineteen to seven over Sac State. So, <sighs> so yeah, when you're thinking yeah. about. Oh, we only beat them 59 to 17. That's exactly right. Northern Arizona f- scored 41 on Arizona. Sacramento yeah. State held Arizona State to 19 points. So Exactly. It, it could be we've lost to FCS teams before. Yes. Let's not complain about this. Yes. Like it's, it's it's fucking great. Like all right. Yes. So yeah, Pac-12 all around pretty good pretty good week. Um Especially, there was uh there was one Well, I mean, it, well, in t- actually in terms of college football playoff, I that's uh I think WSU is now the, the, yes. the, 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 the we are the great hope. It's well, it's Oregon and WSU. Like Oregon, if they won out and, and USC. And, and, I mean, let's well, be actually, real. Let's see. Yeah, obviously, USC is probably going to be ranked. Or were, were they? They ranked? are. They are. Yeah. They are. They jumped in. That's right. Yeah. I I, yeah. I hadn't looked at it yet. I knew that we yeah. were twenty, and that was it. But yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah so if USC is looks, any, uh, they they deserve to as well. Actually. Yeah, they deserve. Fresno to be State's ranked. a solid team. They went and beat beat the hell out of a ranked team in Stanford yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Um, totally deserve it. We could go into that, but I don't think we have time, but, um, no, uh, but yeah, so all in all solid week, um, people will look at you dub losing and, and seeing that as like a black mark, but honestly, but you, I, I think we, you, you saw you, you dub get a lot of these like picks to win like 11 games just because it's like, when you look at the schedule, you're like, yeah, they're, they're not going to lose that game. They're not going to lose that game. But right. we've talked about probabilities in the past. They're not as strong as they were in 2016. Right. The even, probabilities, yeah. if you're just going binary, you're going win, 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 win. But, but the probabilities, you know, like when in a come in, so they, they, they'll, they're, they're going to lose again. Like they'll probably lose, like, you know, they have, they have a tough schedule. I mean, not as like, not, they don't have the gauntlet that we do as much because we kind of flip our home roads, but um, they, they do, they still like the Pac 12 North is tough. Uh, they still have to play Oregon. They still have to play. I mean, they have to play us, but that whatever. They still have to play Stanford. <laughs> you know, I, they yeah. they have USC this year. So yeah, um, yeah. So they they there's there's more losses in there, but the Cal one was definitely a surprise. You know, I I thought I thought that Cal would cover, but I the the win was a surprise for yeah. sure because Cal's yeah. offense showed a little more than they did against. Uh, UC Davis for sure, but yeah, but yeah. So all in all, a uh, pretty solid weekend. We 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 get as as uh, Seahawk fans, we got the perfect football weekend yeah. um, with, with the WSU win, UW loss, and uh, Seahawks, Seahawks win. win. So yeah. yeah, so man, um, let's uh let's uh take a break, and then I we we got some we got some QBs to talk about, I think. And, right. and and then and then we we don't have much time, but I think we'll take well. Or do you, should we just do that and then do break? Let, do, let's just power through it. Let's power through it. Let's okay. just power through. So we're not going to make you take another break. Just roll with us. Um, yep. So Gardner Minshew, man. Yeah. Holy crap. I mean, we. <laughs> How we, about that? We knew when he got that backup job, he was going to play at some point because Nick yeah. Foles was definitely getting injured. But man, yeah. it, it took uh, not even. That a didn't take very long. Not even a quarter. <laughs> holy crap. He got in and he kicked ass, dude. Yeah, like he was uh, two hundred yards, couple touchdowns, two hundred and seventy-five yards on twenty-five passes. Yeah, like that's insane. 
It's totally awesome. I haven't seen all his highlights. They had a little highlight package of just his throws. He made some really nice deep throws too. It wasn't just like, and and his his first touchdown pass was very kind of classic what we expect yep. of him. He he rolled left, yep. threw across his body, you know, avoided some pressure and found an open guy. Very you know WSU fans know know that play well from him. So uh, it it was it's it's just awesome, man. Like and I mean like. Foles is going to be out at least a you know a couple months with that injury. So yeah, you know, uh, no, he's he's a, he's really going to get a that's chance. That's a long one. He's going to get a collarbone. Yep, he's going to get a chance to show what he can do, and potentially, honestly, just off of these stretch of games, build a long career for himself. Yep, I mean that's it's uh, you know if he was on a team that um, you know was maybe trying to go somewhere. I think they'd maybe try to look to sign a veteran guy to jump in there for a few games. Right. Um, but he's on a team that's going nowhere. But also, <laughs> right? he, you know, and I, it, it helps that he played so well. Yeah. You and, know, so he's, you know, they gave him a ton of run during the preseason, which, I, you know, I'm sure helped today. Like, And he didn't even show anything close to this in the preseason. So No, and he was constantly running for his life in yeah. the preseason, yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. that I'm sure that was part of it. Um, seemed like he got a little more time today. Um, and Kansas City's defense is not that good. No, I mean, they're they're right. pretty so-so. But, right. but, you know, so. but I mean, I... I I mean, I think Kansas City's probably roughly a league average defense, right? You know, ish. So they, I mean, they got Frank Clark now, so you know, whatever. But it was and awesome. It was just awesome. Yeah, like, like it's super cool. Like I didn't get to really watch any of it because uh, you know, because I was at the Seahawks and. Oh, um, me neither. Yeah, I was. Yeah, driving. they didn't show much of the game on Red Zone because it was out of hand, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, the things I did see looked great. Um. You know, I mean, it's so awesome for him. It's, it's well, if you think about, it, I think he he might like he's got, like how many like you know it's probably it's obviously the first WSU quarterback to play in his first game as a rookie since Ryan Leaf. Yeah, and yeah. and not many before that. Yeah, Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. I don't know about uh, Rosenbaugh, or Rippin, or any of those guys. Or, yeah, any of those guys. But, but yeah, but but I would imagine Rosenbaugh. But, it, but it's did. been a while. Yeah, you know we've had yeah, some, we, we've had some quarterbacks since then. You know, touch on with NFL teams here and there. But he won that backup job solidly, and we kind of knew that he he would at least get some run at some point. Yeah, and and it's really cool to see him just take it and run with it, and you know. Uh, it's it's kind of crazy. He is playing at Houston on Sunday. I know. Two days after. If anybody wants to like stick around or anything, yeah. you know, that's going. I know there's, there's the a game. lot of Kook fans that are flying out on Sunday that were wishing that they were flying out on yeah, Monday. I don't know. Better change that flight. I know, right? <laughs> can't be. Can't cost that much to change the flight. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It really is. It's an amazing story, and and I saw that you know I I didn't really think of it this way, but somebody tweeted that he was the first quarterback from the class of twenty nineteen to play. Oh, so yeah, even though Kyler Murray started a game in the afternoon, but well, and yeah, Ky- Kyler Murray threw fifty four passes. Was twenty and Kyler Murray had three hundred eight yards. It took fifty four passes to right. get three hundred eight yards. Yeah, it took him a little while to get going. Yeah. Second half was better than the first, but yeah, it's with Minshew. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, he led a bunch of scoring drives. There were some field goals and stuff, some holding yeah. penalties, but he led a bunch of scoring drives. He was, t- I mean, God, twenty two or twenty five, man, that's impressive. I mean, he came in. I mean, the they middle were... of the first quarter, they were. Shh. Yeah, I mean, they may have already been down by ten or fourteen points. Yeah, when they, he came they in. were. They were down a bit when he came. So in. I, I think he more or less played him to a stalemate. Yeah. You know. And, you know, there may have been a little bit of Kansas City kind of letting them have what they can have and, you know, whatever, knowing that they were going to just keep scoring because they scored (laughs) whatever, 46 points or whatever. But, um, yeah, super cool for him. And it's going to be really neat for him to to go a week, you know, prepping as the as the number one guy. And, um, you know, we'll definitely get a good chance to see what he can do. And there's I'm you know, there's going to be ups and downs. But the dude is like, I mean, you know, I wrote you know, a year ago that, oh, you know, Minshew's a pretty limited guy and he's going to, you know, probably not going to be a world beater, but he's at least going to make the air raid fun again. And then, of course, he goes out and destroys the world. So, 
And so, he's you know, still I wouldn't put anything that. past him at this point. I know. I wouldn't put anything past him at this point. Would you? No. No. I, I mean, it, it's cool to see him basically do in the NFL what he was doing last year. Yeah. Um, and actually doing even better. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy cool. And yeah. I know that once uh, – you know, he goes through a couple of games. I'm sure defenses will start to yeah, figure out it's not all gonna what be he like, does. It's but, not all going to be like this. But, but, man, he's going to get a chance to show out. I mean, what else can you ask for? Yeah, first impressions are a big deal. Yeah, you know, you'll always have that. I mean, yeah. dudes, I mean, <laughs> Matt Flynn walked off, you know, walked out of the NFL with whatever, $20 million worth of contracts based off of one game when, you know, Aaron Rodgers was injured. I mean, right. it's, you know, when you're a quarterback, if you can show him something at some point, you know, I mean, it, there's a non-zero chance that he just secured his place in the NFL for the next 10 years with today. Yep. Like, I, I, that's not being, like, overdramatic. Yeah, Matt like, Castle hung around forever. You show a thing, and all of a sudden, you, you can hang out for a long time. Yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, I want to talk about Ryan Holinsky real quick. Yeah, man. So How about that? S- similar situation. Yeah. Uh, quarterback goes down. And he gets his first start, and yeah, like you know, that they didn't they didn't need him to be good, and he didn't like, but he he was pretty damn good. He he uh, yeah. he was efficient, and uh, um, they ran a lot. They ran the ball a lot. They scored se- yeah. they scored seventy two points. That was mostly via the ground, but he still, you know, um, I mean, it's a true freshman starting his first game, and yep. I think he was he was pretty like uh, twenty nine. Uh, 24 30 24 24 of 30 for 282 uh, so that's pretty damn good i know yep. that i know the the competition isn't great but again he's a true yeah. freshman quarterback starting his yep. first game yeah. so um yeah really cool i'm um, really cool for that family yep um yeah obviously they're living down there now so they they go to see it so it's it's yep. good for them to have some you know yep. it's great for them to have that that moment and um man yeah yeah just that he played well and and they, I think, scored the most points in the history of the like school or something. So something yeah. like that. So, yeah, pretty soft landing, which was awesome for him. Charleston Southern. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, you need that. Like, you know, uh, next uh, that's a that's a good place to start since they got Alabama this weekend. But um, yeah, it'll be it'll be you know reality. This week, yeah, but. but I like uh, watch. I, I haven't got a chance to watch the game yet. I've got it saved on the DVR. Um, and I know that Mark and Kim were interviewed uh, during the broadcast. Oh, so, okay. you know, they, they talked a little bit and I, um, yeah, it's, I know it was highly emotional for them. I'm sure. Um, you know, when Ryan threw his first touchdown, you know, three fingers in the air. Oh, that the was, sky. oh man. I, 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 yeah. I was, you know, starting to get a little emotional watching it and I'm, you know, sort of like, you know, however many degrees removed from yeah. the actual situation. So, um, yeah, very happy for him. Uh, you know, really happy for, uh, for the family. Um, you know, it's as usual, it's always worth remembering. It doesn't like make everything better, but, yep. um, it, in fact, it really doesn't make it any better, but it also, um, you know, moments of joy are nice in the middle right. of, um, in the middle of all that despair that, you know, it kind of never really goes away. So, uh, very cool for Ryan. Very, very cool for South Carolina. They've, um, you know, I know that their fan base has really rallied around the Holinskis. They really you know, I mean, you know, the cynical person would be like, well, it's because he's a four star recruit and they haven't gotten one of those at quarterback in quite a while. And, you know, blah, blah. I mean, okay, fine. But, um, you know, they were thrilled that, you know, Ryan chose them as they should be. Um, but they have, you know, rallied around them and, uh, and really supported them as, as best they know how. And so, you know, cool for them that, um, everybody got to feel really good for a day. So, you know, we'll see, uh, you know, I hope he, uh, I hope he emerges, uh, upright <laughs> after playing Alabama, um, be very kind of curious to see how that goes. But, um, you know, I, I, unless, unless things go really, really badly, I think probably he's the new guy. And I, 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 you probably won't see Bentley again. Would be my guess. Yeah, so. cause it was really his his performance. You know, you it seemed like he was Ryan was pushing him already. Yeah, so. there's there's a thought out there that the foot's not really as big of a problem as yeah. maybe it's being made out to be. 
So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but, um, you know, I, I think they maybe needed a reason to make the move and, um, you know, maybe Muschamp was like, Hey, why don't, why don't, you know, why don't you just get that foot healthy, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what Ryan can do over here and, you know, and maybe, maybe it doesn't go well and maybe they go back, but, um, if it, if it's not a total train wreck, I'd, I'd be surprised if Ryan doesn't, doesn't stick. So, right. Yeah. Cool. Very cool though. It, it was it was cool to see. I was I was very happy for that, and and I know that it's super emotional for them. And um, hopefully he does really really well against Alabama, and the the legend of Ryan Holinsky is is born. Great man. Well, yeah. uh, on that note, um, yeah, you think we're long enough? I think we're long enough. I what we wanted to stay efficient, uh, but we weren't. We were. Um, we 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 were going a full like we we were we were bleeding the play clock every time going four yard three yards in a cloud of dust like it but uh but yeah so uh go ahead uh if you're listening to this right now and you have not done so hit subscribe um go ahead and rate us five stars and leave a comment that helps too people like the comments i like to read the comments when you rate us um it's pretty fun uh there's some pretty funny ones on there um and i i uh i i i've and I know some of these people know, like, are my friends, and so they're they're pretty funny as well. But uh, but I, you know, if you um, if you just want to leave a funny review, um, we we love seeing those. Uh, yep. It's 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 it just makes it more it makes more fun and more people like uh, the the reviews look good, and then when people um, when people comment, they actually it helps the algorithm as well, as well. We've yep. gotten uh, quite a few ratings so far, so we appreciate that. Um, one Very of my much. one of my favorite ones is I come for the off key singing, but stay for the in depth parenting analysis. Besides, I'm not <laughs> giving hard seltzer it's due. Never will. They they, nope. s- they seem to have interesting stuff to listen to. Uh, but one of my favorite ones is Meh Two Stars. Uh, don't be like this guy. Don't be like Go Kooks twenty five twenty five. Yeah. Um, the other one was by B A Logan, by the way. Um, don't be like, <laughs> don't be like Go Kooks twenty five twenty five. Meh. I would love to hear less about whatever craft beer you're drinking and more about the Kooks. Uh, Go Kooks twenty five twenty five. We tell you when the craft beer talk ends. Yeah. You know you can just fast <laughs> just forward. Just look past at the it. show notes, buddy. Yeah, just look at the show notes because we know the we can see what people listen to. We know people skip it. That's fine. We do that for us. Like so, just skip past the beer. Other yeah, like, like the, the first beer. twenty minutes or whatever is beer, and the last hour is Cougs. So yeah. we've even cut out all the other crap. Like, come on, yeah. it's football season. We're just talking about yeah. the Cougs. I mean, we haven't even like called the president a racist lately. Yeah, come on. Like this is a we, we, we're not even talking politics anymore. Yeah, we we looked at the listener analytics and, and we you know we adjusted. You know that's right. Also, there's a lot of stuff to talk about now. But um, yeah, that's mostly. Um, right. But yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> I think we've drugged this thing on long enough. I think so, too. But uh, we'll be back later this week with a preview of Houston and go Kooks. Go Kooks, Craig.